Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a DIY concrete floor for a room addition. Now the homeowners wanted to add a, like an entry room area onto their house. So this is the room they're going to add right here. It's 16 by 16. They hired a concrete foundation contractor to come in and put a frost wall in. And the reason they do that is because the house is also on a frost wall like this. So we don't really want to do a like a monolithic slab connected to a house that has a frost wall. Typically we'll do a frost wall on a frost wall or a frost wall connected to a frost wall here in Maine. That way the frost goes down about four feet here in Maine so in the winters we get a lot of freezing thaw cycles and we just want to make sure that nothing moves. You know when the, these two buildings are attached together, the roof lines are attached it's just less likely something's going to move if they're both on the same type of foundation. So we're pouring the floor. We got four inches of concrete going in here on top of styrofoam. I'm using my regular 3500 PSI mix with the water reducer in it, the fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. You don't really need wire mesh in something like this. I mean the floor is all locked in on all four sides by the foundation, the concrete foundation. You got really good, you got almost just about a hundred percent compaction on the subgrade, so it's not gonna settle. It's gonna be heated, so it's not gonna heave. And the fi the fiber mesh is perfectly good enough for any type of reinforcement to help with shrinkage cracks like that. So don't really need wire mesh or rebar in a, in a small floor like this when it's inside a foundation. We use fiber mesh in all our pores. Sometimes we'll have wire and rebar in some of our slabs, but most of our floors that are inside foundations like this, we just use the fiber mesh. We don't have any problems with it. We've been pouring with it like that for years and years. The T is magging the edges right even with the top of the wall. That's what we're going to use to screed by. Luke and I are just pouring this thing out. We got about four yards of concrete on the truck. That's pretty close to the minimum for them. They don't usually charge us a minimum load charge. You know, regular contractors that pour with them every day, they're pretty good about not getting you for a minimum load charge. Uh, if you don't pull with them much, then they're gonna they're gonna hit you with that, and that's gonna be different for each company. So, if you're pouring something small like this, you just want to check with them and see how much more they're gonna add on for that. We're probably pouring around a six and a half, seven slump here today, and. We can do that with the water reducer in the in the mix. We could pour up to an eight if we if we want to really, and that doesn't take take away from the strength of the concrete using the water reducer. Where we pour concrete every day, we like to make the pouring process as easy as possible for us. So, and I would you know if you're doing this yourself, I would recommend you ask for it too, and then you can pour a little bit looser slump and not really worry about hurting the concrete at all. Alright, we're going to leave just a small section of that unfilled in case we're, we're a little bit high. We can pull it into that, that section we didn't fill up. We'll finish getting all our edges magged first. We like mag floating our edges first before we screed. It's just something we've always done. It just It's a little bit neater, easier to screed for us. And you got to mag float them anyway. So you might as, well, might as well just do it first before you screed that section. We have a 14 foot magnesium screed that we use. I don't have a 16 footer. So we're going to run the edge of the screed board off the section that we mag floated. Now if you had a longer one, you could just go right off the top of the concrete wall if you wanted to. But we don't really need, where we screed every day, we can just screed right off our mag wet pad just as easy. We're kick screeding here so as we as we screed backwards, we're kicking 
in the concrete where we move our foot and that allows us just to keep going without having to stop too much now if we get low like we are right here we got to stop and push some up and then we can continue screaming if you want to learn how to pour and finish concrete like we do we do all sorts of uh, concrete work I have a private membership called the concrete underground down in the description below you know click on the little show more section and uh, up pops up all kinds of links to the concrete courses I have stamp courses slab courses but the private membership is where I train people how to do concrete just like I do so you can check that out if you want you see how Luke's magging that edge nice and smooth making sure he's filling in all the little rock holes and stuff that that plays a big part in how easy this is to finish you know if you got all kinds of stuff that are rough and, and uh, not completely magged out well then the finishing process is a little more difficult the next part that makes finishing a lot easier is the bowl floating if you can bowl float this really nice and smooth and fill everything in all the little aggregate all the little lines from the screed then when you come to finish this, like you'll see here in a, in a few minutes, it's going to make that process a lot easier. So getting it bull floated nice and smooth without leaving any big lines is, uh, is the key to finishing this thing a lot easier. Also, having that bull float with the rounded edges on each end leaves a little less of a line than if you have one with square edges. You can see how that's barely leaving any lines at all as T is bull floating that. Nice and smooth. Oh, there's a line there on the right. See that? She'll take that back out as she as she both floats that last section where the screed is, that line will come right out of there. You know you've got it screeded nice and level and smooth if you don't have to fill in any areas under the bull float. I see a lot of people having to go back and throw concrete in under the bull float just to fill in a section. Well, that means you're either digging in too much in that area or Maybe you're riding high with the screed and you've got a hump in there. Um, you want to make sure when you screed that you get it nice and level the first time. That's the, usually the best. You see how that bull float's smoothing that out really, really well where we finished up right there. She is going to go back and take out her what we call her bull float lines where she picks the bull float up it leaves a tiny little bit of a line so if you smooth that out now it just makes finishing a lot easier so we're about 30 minutes after we just got done pouring this it's probably 80 degrees in the sun on styrofoam and the way to check that to see if it's ready is when pressing in there I can still press in about three eighths of an inch. Still a little bit squishy, but it's getting close to being ready to mag. Just gonna finish this one by hand. So we don't wanna wait too long, but we'll probably give it another few minutes before we get out on it. We'll get our edges all mag since we can reach those. That's what it looks like under the mag.
Now we're just going to mag and hand trial this a couple times and get it nice and smooth. We don't usually put a power trial on stuff this small. It's just as easy for us to finish it by hand than it is. I got a power trial right in the truck, but it's pretty small area to be running a power trial on. Uh, especially if you, you know, if you're pretty good at hand trialing, then this is just as easy. Especially using those metal skids I got right there that slide right on top of the concrete. If you guys, I'll have a link for those down in the description if you want to check them out. If you don't use those for finishing, I, uh, I'm willing to bet that after you get them and try them, you'll use them all the time for finishing. Definitely easier than using some type of board or styrofoam to, to finish by hand with. So I'm going around. We've already magged the edges once, so T and Luca hand trialing the edges, and I'm mag floating the, the inside of this, getting it nice and smooth, bringing up the cream. And it's pretty hot out here today, so as soon as I get it mag floated, I'm going to go right back around and hit it with a hand trial too to get it trialed the first time, and then we're going to let it sit for a little while, and then we're going to hand trial it again. And you'll see how smooth this comes out after just two passes with a hand trial. Like I showed you just a little bit earlier, the key is just getting on it at the right time. That's what's going to make this part easy or hard. <laughs> if you get on it too late, then uh, mag floating is going to be really, really hard by hand. We're actually coming from another job we did already this morning. We poured a, a big house and we left two guys on that to finish. And then this is the second pour of the day. That's why we're all together here in one truck. So we're just getting this second job done today. And that'll be it for today after this. When concrete's on styrofoam like this out in the sun and it's 80 degrees, it, it starts taking off pretty quick. So there's not much time to wait when you start finishing. It's just that initial wait after you get done pouring the concrete. We, like I said before, we waited about 30 minutes and then we got our edges magged and then probably another 5 or 10 minutes and I jumped right on it right here with these knee boards. So it wasn't long after the pour here where it's so hot. And then after it starts going like this, it it takes right off. So you're going to want to stay right on it. We're going to give it, once I, you can see I'm hand trialing it now for the first time. And that's pretty easy. Right after you mag float, if you go right back over it with a hand trial, you can, uh, you can move right along pretty quick, get it pretty smooth. Then you're going to give it, probably give it a few minutes to let it set up a little bit more like we're going to and then uh, hand trial it again it's going to be really nice and smooth. You could leave it like that if you want. You could just leave it hand trialed finish, put a sealer on it and it would be a, a pretty nice looking floor that way. I think most people on these room additions like this, they'll tile them or put indoor outdoor carpet on it or something, some type of linoleum flooring over the top of the concrete where I'd be more apt to just leave the concrete finished. You could uh, either stain it, seal it, you could polish it, you could even do an epoxy coating over it. It would be better than putting some other type of flooring over it. You can see how easy it is using those kneeboard skid type type things. They just slide right on the surface as you push yourself backwards. And then you can just keep going without having to stop really. So that's mag floated and hand trialed once so we've actually 
I call it hitting the floor. We've hit the floor twice now by hand. And we're going to hit it one more time here. You just watch this. So we gave the surface 20 minutes to set up a little bit more. So it's harder now. Now Luke's going to go over it. And because the surface is harder, it's going to be smoother when he goes over it with a hand trial this time. Now you could go over it a third time if you really wanted to. But you can see how smooth that's getting it. We don't need to go over it a third time. So he's just going to hit it this time. And I'll get you a close up here at the end. You'll see how nice and smooth this came out. Now Luke's going to finish up right there and then he's going to jump off and then he'll trial out underneath the skids and that'll be the finished trialed surface right there. I'm going to get you a little bit of a, a close up here right at the end and you can see just how smooth this came out. Now like I said now you can decide what you want to do over the top of it for flooring or you could just leave it a concrete floor finish. Build your room addition and you've got a a finished floor right there is a concrete floor. The key with troweling is just not leaving any lines, you know, knowing at the angle to, to hold it at and how to move it back and forth without leaving lines. But there's the smooth surface. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.